Welcome to Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for this Friday, August 31st, 2012. We begin with an update from the world of chemistry as it applies to the environment. Here on Brainstorm, we've talked a lot about technologies that aim to reduce or sequester carbon dioxide. None of the systems would be perfect even once developed, so multiple approaches are needed. That being said, Spanish researchers have suggested using urine to capture carbon. The most surprising thing is that this isn't crazy. A major component of urine is the organic compound urea. Urea can be easily turned into ammonium bicarbonate and ammonia, which together absorb carbon dioxide to form more ammonium bicarbonate. Don't worry, it gets better. This ammonium bicarbonate could be used as fertilizer. And if used in calcium-rich soil, it formed calcium carbonate and absorb even more CO2. Now, it's actually possible for the urine to go bad, so a preservative is needed. In this case, a small amount of wastewater that is a byproduct of crushing olives. Study shows that this urine-olive mixture could last about six months and potentially reduce emissions by 1%, which isn't a lot, but the major point is that something that usually gets thrown away could become a resource for helping reduce pollution. Industrial and domestic chimneys could be converted into containers full of the urea mixture, creating higher pressures for the gas passing through and increasing the capacity of CO2 it could absorb. As funny or gross as this may seem, the fact is we need to find better ways to use our waste. Both developing and developed countries could use processes like this. Turning waste treatment from something that drains resources to something that produces resources and even helps the environment. We'd like to take a moment to thank you all for being with us for 100 episodes of Brainstorm. If you'd like to help support us, please check the video description. There's information on the annual Doctors Without Borders charity event. It's a great cause that the whole Brainstorm team supports. So please donate, share, or do whatever you can to help out. Thank you. Our second story comes from the world of material science. A group at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center is developing ways to coat objects with materials to make them stronger. As you probably know, space is dangerous. One of the reasons is because it's full of junk, like micrometeorites, solar particles, and old bits of spacecraft. For sensitive equipment and solar panels going into space, this is an issue, and quite an engineering challenge. These vulnerable objects don't function very well when encased in metal, and even if they did, it'd make things way more expensive to send it into orbit. The solution is called atomic layer deposition, a technique originally developed by the semiconductor industry to manufacture computer chips. It works by exposing a substrate material to various precursor gases in cycles, depositing layers that, as the name suggests, can be just atoms thick, other similar processes don't have the same control. The cyclic reaction makes it easy to get a precise thickness and can effectively coat complex 3D shapes. One potential use for spacecraft would be coating windows in a thin layer of aluminum oxide, increasing its strength by about 80% without making it noticeably thicker. However, a goal is figuring out how to deposit crystalline boron nitrate, which is actually one of the strongest materials in the world. Currently, films of this material require reaction chambers heated to 2,552 degrees Fahrenheit, but they think it could be possible at only 752 degrees using ALD. Once the issues are worked out, this kind of material coating could make space much safer for sensitive equipment and even people. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description.